All right, hello and welcome back. My name is Cameron Kirk and this is another video on DE10 Nano projects. And I'm hoping to make a really quick and easy video here. Um, so let's jump right into it. Um, so uh, we've seen in the past where to get this system CD. And if you're not familiar, link is in the description on where to download this. We get this from Terra6 website. Um, I'm not going to go look for it right now. If you've been following along, you should have downloaded this system CD already with the correct hardware revision. I've talked about this in a couple of different videos. And also, in order to do today's project, um, what we're going to do is we're going to fire up one of the demos we have in there. And in fact, let me do a couple of things. I'm going to just open this up in a new folder called HDMI live. We're going to fire up their uh, HDMI demo and see that it is working. Uh, let's see, extract this here. Give that one second to load. Uh, the reason why I'm doing this is because I know that I had already went in and modified, uh, modified um, the, the demo folder. Okay, so um, before I jump into there, let's go into the user manual here. And I am going to go full screen and I'm going to get out of the way here. So down under examples for FPGA, we have this HDMI TX. And what this is, is it explains how it works. It's going to make a simple video pattern that displays on the screen. And it talks about the code. We're not going to get into the code too much, but it tells you where to get this. And we're not going to run this batch file. Uh, we're just going to simply uh, go to this uh, folder and compile it and fire it up using our environment on the DE10 Nano. Um, so that's the other thing is if you haven't already seen my video on how to set up um, Linux uh, on this DE10 Nano, I highly recommend you go do that because we're going to be using that setup in today's video to do what we're about to do. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and open this up. So uh, these are all the contents of that uh, system CD and under demonstrations, FPGA. We're going to go into this HDMI TX and we're going to open up this project in Quartus. Now the nice thing about this project is it just straight up gives you all of the code and all of the configuration required to get a picture out of the HDMI. And I think this will be a good starting point for me to do a spin-off video or for you to go off on your own and try and do a spin-off of this uh, HDMI project. And if you do happen to do that, please let me know in the comments. I'd love to see what you were able to get working based on this design. All right, let me pause the recording while this loads. Well, I think it's about to pop up here. There it goes. Okay, let me hide my cam. Okay, I'm gonna run this launch IP upgrade and perform the automatic upgrade. Um, I don't remember how long this takes, but I don't think it takes very long. I'm gonna pause the recording though while this loads. Okay, that is now all done. We got these happy little green check marks. Um, so we can, actually, I haven't even really looked around too much on the code inside here. Uh, looks like there's ADC, Arduino is set up in here, interesting. GPIO is on the port list. HDMI is on the port list. Hmm. There's a counter. And then I'm guessing if I go into files and I look at the vpg.v, this is going to show how they are generating 
that pattern. According to VGA timing, very interesting. Ah, these are probably the values. Oh yeah. So these are the different resolutions that we can run and they're punching in the values. Wonder where they're getting the picture. Well, I will definitely make a follow-up video showing how we can change the image that is getting displayed. I think that would be a very informative video to do in the future, but for now I'm just going to show you how to get this running on the board because I feel like it was actually surprisingly easy to do and uh, I felt like it was worth making a video just in case if uh, you aren't aware of how easy it is to fire up this demo. So I'm going to start off by first compiling everything. I'm not going to change any of the code. I'm just going to run this compilation and I'm going to pause the recording and we will come back when this is done. All right, so that was successful. So now what we're going to do is go up to file, convert programming files. And this is the process we go through anytime we want to flash the FPGA with our design. We switch it to raw binary file. Let's give it a unique name like HDMI live. And we have to give it SOF data. So you select this guy, you go to add file, and we're going to go to output files and select this SOF. Now this should go really fast. I'll click generate. And there it is. Very good. So now from inside this folder, there's our guy. And so what we can do is I'm going to right, uh, shift right click hold down shift and right click in the blank area, open PowerShell window here. That's slow. There it goes. SCP, um, HDMI, I'm going to hit tab to autocomplete. And we're going to send that to root at 192.168.0.62 colon tilde for the home folder. And password is root, unless if you've changed it. And there we go. So now what we're going to do, I'm going to close PowerShell. I guess I could have gotten into it from PowerShell. But let's do this. I guess I only have DE10 serial. Uh, okay, 192.168.0.62. And open. I just want to quickly change the settings. I know I do this every time. Really need to get this saved into a profile. Apply. Got to log in as root. Password is root. And here is our HTMI live.rbf. I did this earlier and I called it demo. So in order to get this guy plugged in, if you're running the setup that I'm running for Linux, Debian Linux, we're going to mount slash dev slash MMC P1. We're going to put that at FAT, which is our mount point that already exists. And when we look inside FAT, we have this guy right here, SOC system.rbf. And every time the system boots, it takes this raw binary file and whatever this raw binary file is, it, it flashes the FPGA with it. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy our HDMI live I live, and we're going to send that into FAT SOC, and I'm using tab to autocomplete, and we're going to reboot which is going to kick me out, but that's okay. And while it reboots, if I switch over to this view, oh, it already booted. Um, so uh, what we have here on the left of your current screen, that is what is coming out of the HDMI. Oh, look at that. Give me one second here. That's not the one I want to change. This one, my camera has gone stale. Okay, now you can see where I'm pointing. 
So the view on the left is actually what's coming out of the HDMI port. Um, it's generating that color pattern. And uh, the view on the right is obviously the board. Uh, I have it plugged in with the HDMI. Uh, the HDMI is running to my capture card, which is plugged into USB. And that's how we're able to see it on the display there. And what this allows you to do is if you click the buttons up here, let me see if I can get more centered under the camera. Is this thing's kind of heating up a little bit? Uh, if you click these buttons, what happens is it's actually changing the output resolution of the display. Um, and you, you'll also notice that the color pattern changes. That is actually because my color, um, sorry, my capture card just displays that color pattern on its own. So if I unplug HDMI, that's the capture card putting that um, color pattern up. Um, and so when we, uh, when we plug in the HDMI and we see this color pattern, that's, the, that's coming off of the FPGA. Now the other thing to keep in mind is this uh, design is this HDMI image is coming straight out of the FPGA. It is not using anything in the Linux side. It's not using anything in the ARM processor. This is all coming out of the FPGA. Um, so as I click these buttons, you'll see there's like an LED counter and then uh, the resolution is increasing. Uh, and because the, res the display resolution coming through the HDMI is changing, um, my capture card has to reload and adjust to the new display resolution. Now, the only other thing that I am not able to show you currently with my current setup um, is uh, it is generating a tone. Um, and that is when you have this switch flipped up. Uh, I have it flipped up right now, but I'm not able to capture that audio with my current setup. My capture card does not support that, or I think it does, but I wasn't able to get it to pipe through. Um, but what I did do was, uh, when I did this on my own, uh, I plugged this into my TV, and I had the TV volume turned up, and then when I turned that on, I was able to hear the tone. Um, it's just a ringing tone, so it's not, you're not missing too much if you don't, if you don't care about that. I think the exciting thing though is getting that picture out of the HDMI port. That was, when I realized how easy it was to get that working, I got very excited and I wanted to make a video on that. So that is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you found this helpful. Um, I hope to expand on this and give you some more um, helpful videos on how to actually control that HDMI using this design example and we can go from here. All right, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.